Hi, I'm Emma. I'm the Library and Archives Assistant. We're really lucky at Hereford Cathedral because we've got one of the last remaining chained libraries in the world. There's a long history of books and learning here. In fact, the Hereford Gospels, which sits on our shelves, was made in 800 and it's the earliest surviving object in the entire cathedral. It predates the buildings themselves. There are about 1500 books here 200 or so are medieval manuscripts, which are handwritten on animal skin. We often call it parchment. Some of them have wonderful illuminations that look like they were only painted yesterday. The rest of the books are printed. Many of them are quite early and rare. The language of the majority is Latin. We've also got English and there's some Welsh and we even have a Bible that um, is in Latin, Aramaic, Hebrew and Greek, so we've got a lot of wonderful books here. The main subjects, as you might imagine, are theology and church law. There are also some history, science, medicine and other topics that are covered in the volumes. Many of the books were donated to us by clergy or bishops or deans when they left the cathedral. The library, which you see here today, didn't always look this way. Elizabeth I sent inspectors to have a look around and they found it to be in a filthy and neglectful state, covered with dirt and mould and almost falling down with age. So as a result, statutes were made commanding us to take better care of the books. They had to move to a more weather-tight building and be chained and locked. The work didn't really begin until 1611 with Thomas Thornton. He'd been a canon at Oxford and and he'd seen the library installed by Thomas Bodley there. He asked that only an Oxford ironsmith built our, our shelves and that they used the best iron and coal and the work had to be nothing inferior to that in Oxford. A local carpenter made the presses and he had to make them of good and well seasoned oak, the best that may be gotten. So as you can see, it's a three decker shelving system. Because of the advent of printing, there were much greater volumes of books because they were cheap to make, easier to buy. So we had these, all of these shelves and people started putting books upright, which wasn't the case in the past. Um, we also had the desk for studying and then the index cards on the ends so people could look and find the books that they wanted. As you see, the four edges of the books are out, which is different to modern bookshelves. Um, it's so that the chains could be attached to the books. This is the easiest place to attach them, and it means when people lift them off the shelves, it's much easier to do it without tangling them all up. Um, they also have this new fangled design called a squibble, which means that they don't get tangled up again when they're taken off the shelves. Okay, um, so I'm going to show you how we get into the mechanism. This is a replica of the original 17th century key. Um, we put it in here at the end. It's a lovely clunk. Pull this down. And then, as you can maybe see, we have rods, and because I've unlocked it, I can pull the rod along, take off the chain, and then the book will come out. And the reverse, that's true. Um, the bottom rod is quite difficult to get at, so we have desks that do this so that we can get to the rod down there. Even though this is a really ancient library, it's a working library and scholars come here from all over the world to study the volumes and they're always making new and fascinating insights every time they come. So all the mechanisms are still in use because we take them off the shelves to take them up to our reading room for people to read in peace and quiet. Thank you.